Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Praise the Lord. If you take your time to read your Bible from the beginning to the end, you will agree with me that among all the great biblical characters, Job stood out. There is no man or woman of faith in the Bible that was tempted as severely as Job. The Bible says he was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Now, we all know Satan's mission. In the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says that Satan comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So one day, Satan came to God and asked for permission to destroy everything that belonged to Job. That very day, Job lost all his children, 10 in number, and all his wealth. As if that was not bad enough, Satan got another permission from God to afflict Job with a terrible disease. So here lies Job, devastated, childless, and the worst of all, afflicted with terrible sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. In all this, the Bible says, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Instead, he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Going by what happened to Job, we understand that trouble does not require any invitation before it comes. Tell your neighbor, trouble does not require any invitation before it comes. The question is, how do you handle it? Ask your neighbor, how do you handle it? because the way you handle it matters. If you handle your hard times with care, they will soon turn to good times. But if you don't handle your good times with care, they will soon turn to hard times. Job saw his hard times as a reason for believing in God, just as he had seen good times as a reason for believing in God as well. When the goings were good, I mean, when there was food on the table and money in the pockets, Job said to God, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. May your name be glorified. When later there was no food on the table, and no money in the pocket, Job said, Lord, you gave to me, and you have taken away. May your name be glorified. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Ooh, because of who you are, I give you praise. Oh, yes, I do. It's because of who you are. I will leave my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. 
You may be seated. In other words, Job was telling God, whether you save me or not, I will continue to serve you because I know you are my savior. Whether you heal me or not, I will continue to serve you because I know you are my healer. Whether you deliver me or not, I will continue to serve you because I know you are my deliverer. I know you all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody say, I know you all the time. I know you all the time. To the carnally minded, Job was simply sounding unrealistic in the face of overwhelming negative sense evidences. He was sounding unrealistic. The Bible says that his heart was deeply engaged with God. He was never heard nor seen to be engaged in any desperate prayer of casting and binding as many in our generation would do today given the same circumstance. This shows that you can be thankful even when it seems there is nothing to be thankful about. For example, you may be full of sickness and when it is time for prayer, you say, thank you, Lord. You may be full of headaches and when it is time for prayer, you say, thank you, Lord. You may be full of severe pains. And when it is time for prayer, you say, thank you, Lord. 